Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, August 7th, 2024. And once again, on these Wednesdays, we are privileged to have with us a man of men, a person of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, who not only says, but he does what he can to live to the highest spirit of bringing the freedom of humanity back to us as it's being stolen every day by a crime syndicate called the government. And Judge, thanks for being here. And to illustrate the criminality of the government in charge, you have an article that's coming out tomorrow that everybody really should read. And it's about this person, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, or Sheikh Mohammed, and the problem of torture. In the months following the attacks of 9-11, the government laid blame for the orchestrating them on Osama bin Laden. Then, after it murdered bin Laden, the government decided that the true mastermind was this guy, Muhammad. You go on to say, by the time of bin Laden's death, Muhammad had already been tortured by CIA agents for three years at various black sites and charged with conspiracy to commit mass murder, to be tried before an American military tribunal at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. This was the uh, brainchild um, of Alberto Gonzalez, who was at the time uh, White House counsel and eventually became attorney general under George W. Bush, and the brainchild uh, of South Carolina uh, Senator uh, Lindsey Graham. Put them in Gitmo. The federal laws don't apply. The Constitution doesn't apply. It's Cuba. And best of all, those pesky federal judges can't reach you. Well, that turned out to be wrong because the Supreme Court ruled that wherever the government goes, the Constitution goes with it. And since the government has a 99-year lease on Gitmo, a lease that it has already extended, even though the lessee, the uh, Cuban government, has told them to leave and the feds are not leaving, it's the functional equivalent of American land, and therefore the Constitution does apply. Yeah. Then they realized, well, wait a minute, we charged them with conspiracy. Conspiracy is not a, is not a war crime, and military tribunals can't try people for conspiracy. So retroactively, they changed the whole thing. Another Lindsey Graham concoction to say, well, it's a military tribunal, but it can now try civilian crimes and it will follow the federal rules of criminal procedure. Well, if that's the case, Barack Obama said, let's move them to a real federal court. This is one thing I agree with Obama on. And it won't take 20 years to try them. The federal courts will try them uh, right away. And they'll either be acquitted and sent home or convicted and executed or convicted and sent to Supermax in Florence, Colorado. Whereupon again, Lindsey Graham came through. He's the real culprit in much of this, Gerald, and offered legislation which Congress passed that prohibited moving anybody outside of Guantanamo Bay for any reason. So they can't be moved out of Guantanamo Bay to be tried. They can't be moved out of Guantanamo Bay to go to jail. They can't be moved out of Guantanamo Bay to be executed. There's no execution uh, facilities uh, there. They can't be moved out of Guantanamo Bay for any reason. Whereupon the case went back to the military tribunals and it has been there since 2006. They're on their fourth team of prosecutors, their second team of defense lawyers, and their fourth. <laughs> None of this would have been the case if Bush hadn't done what Graham and Gonzalez and the other uh, uh, more bent on revenge than justice had told them to do if they had simply let them be tried in federal court in Manhattan where their crimes were committed. So why do I raise this now? I raise this now 
because the government, not the defendants, the government initiated plea bargaining. Why? Because the government does not want a trial at which the CIA's torture and the CIA's disruption of other government and the CIA's rampant unbridled violence will be laid out for everybody to see. They enter into a guilty plea. You can't leave Guantanamo, so you're going to spend the rest of your life here. It's a, I've been to Guantanamo. It's a lot nicer than Florence, Colorado, which is where El Chapo is and, and people of that, uh, of that uh, ilk. The government accepts the guilty plea. The defendants accept the guilty plea. The court accepts the guilty plea. And then the government changes its mind. Now the government's trying to get out of the guilty plea because it looks bad for Biden and Harris that they entered a guilty plea without the death penalty in the middle of an election campaign. That's where we are today. What sick crap. This is what happens when politicians bent on vengeance, again, Lindsey Graham, uh, tamper with the uh, judicial system. It's very, very unjust. It's unjust for the public. It's unjust for the victims. It's unjust for the defendants. Now the judge has to decide whether or not to uh, accept the Defense Department's change of mind. So I have one more statistic to tell you about, which will blow your mind. Uh, if the judge rules that they can withdraw uh, the guilty plea and the trial's going to go on, the judge is sitting on a motion to dismiss based upon torture. Now, he's a new judge in the case. In order to rule on this motion, he has to read it. Do you know how long the motion is? 40,000 pages. Oh, come on. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. This is what George W. Bush and Lindsey Graham have brought us. And they call this a, a country of democracy. You torture people. Yeah. If you're tortured, how many years did they torture this guy? Three years they tortured him. Yeah, oh, and, and of course he's going to say anything he wants after being tortured. Yeah, I'll say what the hell you want. Stop, you know, oh, by the way, you see how the Israelis are torturing the, the prisoners? Oh, Stick, you know, Sticking metal things up their anus? And yeah, how about yeah. that, huh? Oh, that's okay. Why, you anti-Semite, Salenti, how dare you say that? They, they put the prisoner's iPhone up there and then they couldn't get it out. Uh, and when they brought the prisoner to uh, a hospital, the doctors, of course, were scandalized and immediately reported it. And then they anesthetized the prisoner. They got the iPhone out of there. This is disgusting. Oh. And then these nine uh, thugs who had also sexually raped him before they put the uh, mobile device in there uh, were arrested uh, and uh, charged with a war crime. And then mobs stormed the jail. Yeah. And the mobs were repelled. They moved them to another jail. Another mob stormed that jail. This time the mob let them go. And Netanyahu's government uh, let them go home. And the Knesset is now debating a formal immunization of them and giving them permission to shoot and kill Palestinian prisoners with a bullet in the head because there's a shortage of beds in, in their jails. Now, a bed in their jail is not a bed like you and I and the people watching us now sleep on. It's just a wire mesh without a box spring. The <laughs> prisoner is stripped naked and spread eagled and chained to the bed with a blindfold uh, and, uh, and a diaper uh, and is fed through a straw when they decide to feed him. That's the bed they're talking about. And that's what Netanyahu is getting away with, funded by the American taxpayer. Yep. And of course, Netanyahu is so loved by Congress uh, that that display that we were just here, bringing that criminal, a war criminal in front of everybody's eyes. But boy, does Congress like them. Hey, Judge? Well, they gave him uh, 58 standing ovations. Uh, in a speech that was a, a little bit over an hour. So it was one ovation a minute. But the longest standing ovation, which was over a minute. Now, try standing and clapping for a minute. It's, it's, it's a little uncomfortable. However, they gave him the wildest standing ovation when he condemned the demonstrators outside the Capitol building 
for their exercise of the freedom of speech. So you have members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, every one of whom has taken the same oath I did to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, which includes the First, first Amendment, applauding a murderer, a genocidal maniac for condemning Americans some of whom are friends of ours, like Max Blumenthal and Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, were right outside the Capitol as Netanyahu was condemning them, condemning Americans for exercising the quintessential American right, the freedom of speech. And Congress applauded him for that. As Scott Ritter says, hey, Judge, what do you expect? That audience was bought and paid for. Well, look what just happened over. What was that election? Where was it um, that the woman um, just lost the, the primary? Oh, uh, St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. How many millions did they spend uh, to defeat her? And I think it was eight or 11 million. Yeah. They, they they had one up here in New York where they spent 13 million. Yeah. Uh, these, these are numbers that are unheard of uh, in Democratic or Republican uh, primaries. Uh, and all of this money was the Jewish donor class that wanted to get rid of two African-American members of Congress who were critical of Netanyahu. Yeah. I mean, this is so sad what's happened to this country. And again, you know, we're having a rally, everyone. Judge Napolitano will be here. Scott Ritter, uh, Max Blumenthal, his wife, uh, Anya Parampil and others. And um, we have to unite for peace. And we're fighting against these people uh, that they're that are stealing our our heart and soul from us by imagine applauding and bringing that little arrogant clown boy over here, a murderer, Netanyahu and applauding him and then condemning those who want peace. And this is this is what oh, by the way, if you go before I went on the air, and went to all the mainstream sites. Not one word from The Guardian to BBC to ABC to CNN, all over, not a word about what's going on in Israel mm. uh, or what's going on in Gaza, what Israel is doing to them. Not a word. <clears throat> hey, but how about those Olympics? Hey, Judge. Wow. Well. You know, that's the news. And so we're doing everything we can. <clears throat> and what you're Talking about, by the way, going back to this article, you talked about, you know, Guantanamo, and you have over here that it's costing we, the plantation workers of Slavelandia, $540 million annually to keep this, this, this jail going in a country that we have no business being in. And you mentioned right. here, I'll never forget this. You said that President Barack Obama wanted to close Gitmo. I'll never forget his first day, his first day when he took office and they have him, you know, sitting there and he's signing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close Guantanamo. You know what that was? Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yep. I called him the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize when he lied his way into office as a peace candidate. As soon as he got in, remember the troop surge in Afghanistan? Wasn't oh, that yeah. wonderful? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I want that guy Gaddafi out of there. I want that guy Assad out of there. Yes, yeah. yes. 500. Didn't he actually boast I'm very good at killing? He is, of course, the only American president that we know of who has used drones to target and kill Americans. Now, they weren't in the U.S., but they were Americans who weren't even indicted or charged with any criminal activity, and he just uh, vaporized them. Yeah. These are the people. This is what they're doing. And if everybody out, you know, people say to me, I mean, there are a lot of people now that are very upset. And they go, hey, what could I do? I said, well, do something. What are you, six years old? Whatever you want to do, do something positive to change this in any way you want. But do something. And again, there are more people that are disgusted with this, and we have to get a million people up here. And that's what Scott Riddle wants, and that's what I want, because we have to make the news on this. You're telling and me i got to come up the night before because Ritter's going to make sure that the uh, highways are jammed. That's right. <laughs>
Why would the government agree to such a plea bargain? You're talking about this guy that they brought up to charges for the person it claims are the monsters who murdered 3,000 Americans on 9-11 and triggered all the horrors that followed those murders. What does the government fear? You write, what does it always fear? The truth. It fears the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is the secret army that the president has called the CIA, the murders it has committed, the coups that it has uh, caused, the torture that it has uh, visited upon people. The defendants have all of that, and they're going to introduce all of that. That's why the government itself, not the defendants, inst instigated the uh, plea negotiations because the government lawyers told their bosses in the Department of Defense and the Department of, uh, of Justice, we can't try this case without all this stuff coming out. And some of us refuse to try it because in the states where we are licensed to practice law, we cannot defend torture or we lose our licenses. So the government really has a hot potato on its hands because of George W. Bush uh, and, the, uh, and the torture regime. I, I don't think that uh, uh, Secretary of Defense Austin, when he attempted to withdraw the guilty plea, and again, the judge hasn't ruled yet if that withdrawal is effective, uh, had, a, had a grasp uh, on all of this. And he may not care because he's only concerned about what happens in the next 90 days between now and uh, Election Day. And you go on to write here, the government knows that much of its behavior from the CIA orchestrated overthrow of the popularly elected prime minister of Iran in the early 1950s, that was Mossadegh, to the untruthful excuses for toppling Saddam Hussein will show American foreign policy at its imperialistic and violent worst. I want to mention about Iran in 1950. It was 1953. And the coup was brought by Kermit Roosevelt. That was what Theodore Roosevelt's what grandson, great grandson, right? And right. Churchill. Judge, the data of that, the facts were not released. Remember, this is 1953 until 2017. The only newspaper, and you, one of the per people that subscribe to it as I do, that reported on this, none of the American news did. Only the Financial Times about how Churchill basically said that we want that oil. And that's all it was about because Mossadegh had the nerve to say, no, that oil in Iran does not belong to Anglo-Iranian oil, better known today as BP, <clears throat> or Standard Oil, better known today as ExxonMobil. That oil belongs to the Iranian people. No, it doesn't. We're taking it. And people have no idea of the overthrow of Mossadegh, putting in the Shah that they pulled out of southern France and bringing in the Savak, the secret police that made the SS look good. Yes, you're 100% you're correct. I honestly think that uh, Kermit Roosevelt and the others presented this to the brand new president of the United States as a fait accompli and said, you can't stop it now. I don't even know if he realized, if Eisenhower realized what was uh, happening, but this was the first of many, this is the beginning uh, of the uh, CIA's uh, violent interference. Remember, it's only five years old at this point. It was started in 1947. According to Truman, it was started as just an intelligence agency. Truman, as you know, in 63, lasts what the CIA uh, has uh, become and said if he had known this, he never would have signed the legislation. I'm, and not, I'm not defending Harry Truman. I'm just pointing out historically uh, how power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And these people have absolute power. They are yeah. not transparent and they're only answerable to the president himself. Uh this is my book, Tread Tracking, that I wrote back in 1989. And it's about how I became far better than Megatrends, Time Magazine. It's how I became a trend forecaster. And the fall of the Shah. Wow. 
I was the chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry back then. And I was living in Chicago and DC. And as all this was going on, they taught us how to hate Iran. Yes, they did. And that's when I became a political atheist. I realized what a crime syndicate the politicians were. And by the way, I believed all the other, the crap for a lot of years. I just started learning to think for myself truly back then because I knew about the overthrow and how they taught us to hate the Iranian people that were overthrowing the Shah. And all the Iranians were saying to the Americans, get out of here. We had enough of you. Close down your embassy. Get out. We're not going to close it down. We're going to stay. Jimmy Carter and his wife, Rosalind, spent New Year's Eve, I write about this, with the Shah and his wife. And he came back and he said the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. He also said he would rather have spent his time with the Shah than anywhere else in the world. In the Bronx, we used to say bullshit has its own sound. I knew this thing was going to go down. And that's when I became a trend forecaster. You know what I did? I said, you know, I bet oil and gold prices are going to go up as this revolution escalates. And I started playing the futures market. And that's when I made enough money to quit my job. Mm. But that changed my, my thinking on how to think for yourself. And that's what everybody has to do right now. The mainstream media is just, oh, by the way, the, the, one of the articles uh, just came out yesterday. Axios just fired more people, one after another. All of the media is going down to nothing. All they're doing is repeating the same stuff on a different line. So we're giving you everything we can with the Trends Journal to give you the truth in trends. And Judge Napolitano, with his Judging Freedom site that everybody has to go to, if you want to really know the truth of what's going on from the people that really know what's going on and, and the list is there for everybody to see, please go to his site. And it, we, we're at very critical times now. So please join us on September 28th at the four corners of freedom, John and crown street in Kingston, New York, go to occupypeace.com, occupypeace.com. And again, go to judgingfreedom.com because they're taking it away from us, and the judge is showing you in every way what they're doing and what we can do to stop it. Thank you so much for being here, Judge. Uh, it's a pleasure, my dear friend. All the best. Until next Wednesday. Thank you. Bye-bye.